it's got now heated seats. Just going to the nearest BMW showroom to get uh, this thing fixed as you can see. Can you see this? I don't know how to fix this. This has got loose for some reason. Happy Holi everyone. It's Holi out here. And uh, less traffic I'm expecting on the road and that's one of the reasons I'm trying to head towards the BMW showroom so that I can get this mirror fake and while the temperature is 30 degrees and it's about 345 in the evening the breeze is quite cool and I'm not wearing my riding gear because it's pretty much in the city it's not too far away from where I live I've got my helmet on my riding shoes on my gloves uh, but yeah just not the riding jacket when you sit on this bike, right, it is a mini SUV. That's how I always feel about it. Uh, you know, you sit, you see it so high that it's an amazing view from the top out here. Very, very commanding view. Uh, look at the side mirror here. Come on, and it's going bonkers. Look at that, look at that. I don't know, Aaron, it's got a very funny mechanism to fit. Um, I tried, but then in vain. Guys, if anybody has a solution to this damn boring GoPro which suddenly hangs, right, which basically means it stops recording and then <coughs> none of the buttons work, right what you got to do is get down from the, from the bike <laughs> remove your helmet, remove the GoPro and then remove the battery and then insert it back again what a bloody weird waste of time here I don't know how many people have actually told that And the feedbacks to GoPro, I don't know. I'm not even listening to it yet. I also do think that, you know, uh, for my visor, I actually got the PPF coating or the PPF film that I, I got it done. I'm going to remove them because I can see a lot of bubble that I've come out. And when I kind of get this uh, visor to its uh, highest point, it does obstruct in a bit of a vision. You, you know, your right hand doesn't listen when you're on a bike. Whichever bike it may be, it doesn't matter. I don't know, for some reason. The moment you find a stress, you just want to kind of open the throttle. But you know, a lot of videos that I see, uh, the youngsters driving Z900s, the 1000 RRs, and you know, lots of other lovely sports bikes, they kind of rip, and they kind of zip through traffic, yeah? I mean, they kind of, I don't know how they do it, but they, they do that. Oh, Himalayan, very popular bug again. I know friends who have gone through Leh Ladakh on this bike. Very capable machine. Very capable machine. Royal Enfield, very very proud of you man. I mean your bikes have uh, really improved so much, right? Both from a technology standpoint and the looks and aesthetics. Hats off. Well done Royal Enfield. The 143 Nm torque on this bike comes so handy that you can actually pull the bike in 6th gear almost from about 40 km an hour speed and you don't have to downshift. I mean the horsepower is as good as the one that I had in my Ninja 1000 SX which is a sports tourer but I think that is about 140 bhp and 111 newton meters of torque and this one is also about 136 bhp and about 143 Nm of torque quite insane figures right so good to ride this bike in the city as well and as I said today there's no traffic so that's actually a bliss but even with traffic the reason is because it doesn't heat up it doesn't have a very aggressive stance so your back shoulders and neck are all right and your legs as well your legs are not crouched your legs don't feel cramped as you can see my leg is almost about 90 degrees to the foot pegs there you see that's what makes this bike so very comfortable to ride in the city as well I'm gonna take a detour like this from here and then join the mainstream just for fun 
Not that it makes anything easier. Just for fun. I've never attempted a wheelie on this bike, but I'm told it's very, very easy to do a wheelie on this bike, and I'm I'm not that good at it. I don't know how people manage to do a wheelie on this bike here. I mean, such a massive, huge bike this is. But people do it. And they do it with such grace. <clears throat> there you go. I've reached the showroom. Let me get my mirror fixed. Okay, got my mirror fixed. Heading home from here, from the BMW showroom, the service station. What's the time? 5.30. I was here about 4.15 or 4.20. Took me an hour. Because what I realized, the fact after I came here, while I got my mirror fixed, as you can see here, which I could have done at home as well. Uh, pretty simple trick, which I learned. Uh, when I reached here, the guy said, Sir, let me check if uh, your vehicle uh, needs a software update. So he checked the wind number uh, of the vehicle on the computer. And he found that the, my, my, my bike requires a software update. Now the software, software upgrade was done, it takes about 45 minutes for it. Now it's weird, um, you know, a lot of news has been there on YouTube and elsewhere that BMW 1250 GS is manufactured after 2020 are being recalled. But after having a good conversation with the people at the service station, it's not a recall, that I, it's not a, exactly a recall, but every time the bike comes, they would check if it requires a software update and they will get it done. So, it's not a major concern. It's a bit technical as to what the software does. Um, but in addition to that, uh, they also have a campaign that's running. So, they changed the entire throttle, uh, this particular throttle, completely. So they removed it, they have a new grip and the inside part of the throttle has also been changed because apparently there have been some complaints of uh, moisture being formed inside the throttle and hence uh, uh, some concerns raised. Nothing alarming again, they don't call it a recall, they call it a campaign. So they changed the throttle as well, which is good. Now. Coming to how I feel after the new software that's been installed and the throttle, I can't make any difference, man. The bike is just the same. So I was pleasantly surprised that when I went into the showroom today, so they have a new BMW 1250 GS, as I told you, the 2023 version, mine is a 2022. And um, as thought, the 2023 version comes, the GSA, the GS Adventure, the top of the line bike, uh, comes with heated seats. Uh, same, yeah, triple black. It's got now heated seats. There you go, you can see the heated seats button. Obviously the price must have gone up, need to ask. That's quite a quite an upgrade, I must say. But nevertheless, as I spoke in my earlier vlogs, nothing comes uh, free. So the price of the bike has also been jacked up fairly decently, um, and I'm sure that's to accommodate the extra expense of the heated seats. Apart from that, no other changes in the 2023 model. It looks the same. Uh, I also got to see the BMW 1000 RR looks beautiful man that bike I mean it's a piece of art okay the traffic is now picking up all the traffic I kind of avoided this morning 
seems to have returned with vengeance.